Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. Today, we're checking out a new Core XY printer from Vividino. This is the Trugon. So the Trudon is a Core XY 300 by 300 by 400 millimeter fully enclosed printer. If you've been following any of the open source uh, printer builds, this is going to look familiar to you. It's a carbon copy of the Voron. Um, and there's quite a few things that make this unique. Um, primarily is the gantry leveling system that it uses. Instead of um, having to manually level the base plate, which is stationary in this printer, it doesn't move up or down like a, some of the other printers we've shown you, um, you don't have to level the bed at all. You actually make sure that the XY plane is coplanar with the bed itself. So it will probe in the corners and using individual motors and belts, it will level each corner of the gantry. So now the gantry is completely leveled to the base and you don't really need to do any kind of like artificial compensation with the Z micro stepping and stuff that normally happens with ABL. It still does a 36 point probe for uh, bed mesh. If there is any kind of bow to the bed itself, it will compensate for that, but that should be extremely minimal. Um, so there is no bed leveling to speak of here because it does true leveling on its own on the corners and then couples that with the mesh, as I said. Um, so that's kind of cool. We don't have uh, lead screws here, so there's no chance of a lead screw uh, introducing any kind of wobble if the screw is not uh, perfectly straight, um, which can cause Z banding at kind of regular intervals if your screws um, are bent, or if anything is, is out of alignment with the screw. So that takes uh, that completely out of the equation. And then each corner is attached with linear rails, uh, which we can see probably best at the back there. Um, so linear rails all around, um, including the X and the Y uh, directions. And then we have this beefy cable chain for the Z and the XY here. And being core XY, um, to, to move diagonally, it uses only one motor, but to move straight, it actually uses a combination of two motors at the same time. Um, and we have a interesting belt arrangement. Um, so they're stacked one on top of the other. Um, so there is no belt crossing in this. Um, and then for the base plate, there is a removable um, kind of spring steel sheet with a magnet sheet on there. Um, and PEI has been laminated to the sheet. And then there is a thick, uh, base, uh, kind of an aluminum base, uh, to spread the heat out along the base plate under the magnetic sheet there. Um, and it can be thick because it's not moving around, so we're not dealing with any of the weight issues. And then under that, we have a Kinovo uh, bed heater, so genuine Kinovo, and in our case, it's 110 volt, we're in North America, um, and an SSR to switch the bed heater on and off. On the hot end, the uh, leveling is all done with a BL touch, it's a genuine BL touch that's right behind the nozzle here. Uh, and there's kind of a V6-esque hot end. Um, not entirely sure, to be completely honest. And on the hot end, you have the heat sink cooling fan here. And then on either side, you have a blower with an air duct that's directing the air right to the nozzle tip and a silicone sock to insulate the heater block from, from that wind from the cooling fans. Um, all of the belts are uh, original Gates belts, uh, which are great. and. On the back top corner there, there's the extruder itself. So this is a Bowden drive to keep everything as light as possible on the hot end. They've gone Bowden. Um, this is just blue uh, PTFE tube. This doesn't uh, isn't Capricorn excess or anything like that from what I can tell. Um, and that leads up to a cloned Bontech extruder, which is a st standard Bontech arrangement, which is two drive gears on either side of the filament to make sure there's no slippage there. Um, and in our testing, which we'll talk about in a second, we were able to print TPU on this thing like a dream, even though it's a, a Bowden drive. Hanging off the right of the Bontech extruder is the filament runout sensor. It has both the filament runout sensor and it has power loss recovery. So if you lose power in the middle of a print and you're printing from the SD card, um, it should be able to pick up right where it left off. All of the brackets that join uh, the various components are, they look like they're injection molded. I don't think that they are uh, metal, but they very well may be, to be honest. But there's no 3D printed parts um, in anywhere that has any kind of structural uh, significance. At the back, along the top, we have uh, integrated LED lighting to light up the interior. 
And then all of the uh, electronics are enclosed in the base here. Um, to the best I've been able to figure out, uh, you're gonna have to tip it on its side to access the base where all the components are. Uh, in there, you're gonna find the SSR, obviously, and the Canova heater that I mentioned. But powering this is a cloned Duet uh, Wi-Fi board. So Duet is um, running RepRap firmware. It's not running Marlin. Uh, and it's coupled with their own, I think they call them the Panel Do, or the original anyway, a cloned 4.3 inch screen um, that displays a lot of information if, uh, in comparison to what you're used to on a normal Marlin display. Um, and we'll go over that in a little bit more detail in a second, but this is pretty cool. Um, you get an entire web interface built in from the board. Um, so you don't need to add a Raspberry Pi or anything like that for a remote control and uploading um, your sliced files to it. Uh, that's all baked right into the board itself. Um, and on that board, like the original Duet, there are the Trinamic TMC 2660 drivers. Um, so, you know, we've been using a lot of machines that have um, 2208s or the newer 2209s. The 2660, they uh, have a lot higher amperage uh, rating. Um, not that we're pushing high amp motors, um, but there's a lot of buffer room there. And they are integrated into the board, um, so on the PCB itself, uh, which typically results in better through board cooling. And providing power to all of the electronics inside is a 350 watt, 24 volt um, Meanwell power supply. So it's a LRS 350-24. Um, and then they've decided to include an external Wi-Fi antenna. Um, so the, the board is actually using a ESP8266 uh, little Wi-Fi chip. Um, if you've played with any Arduino kind of do-it-yourself stuff, you've probably seen these chips. Um, that's what's powering the Wi-Fi functionality of it, and they've just added an external antenna for better range. So the unit does come completely assembled as you see it here. Uh, it is extremely heavy. So these handles here are for carrying it around. Um, it really is a two-person job, so we each kind of put a hand on the back and one on the handle. Um, but I don't move my printers too much once they're in place. And it is awesome that it is fully enclosed so that I can print some of those higher temp materials like ABSs, nylons, polycarbonates, um, even uh, all temp uh, if you have an all metal hot end, that is, you could get into some of the more exotic higher temperature materials, 300 plus degrees. Um, you'll need to make sure that your thermistor obviously is rated for those temperatures as well. Um, but it's enclosed, so you have that heat retaining uh, capability that will make those uh, a little easier to print. And it has uh, active filtration. So there is a fan on the back that is sucking air through a HEPA filter right there at the top. Um, so it's supposed to reduce the ultrafine particle emissions from printers. Uh, that is a concern for some government institutions and educational institutions. Um, they need to make sure that air quality, uh, that they're within air quality limits in such a enclosed uh, educational space. Um, so this will help them with that. And in a future video, we're going to be measuring UFP emissions uh, with a meter um, with solutions like this and other um, add-on enclosures uh, for open style printers that are uh, designed specifically to reduce those emissions. All right, let's turn it on. Do you hear that? Neither do I. This thing is silent. Uh, the cooling fans are very quiet and uh, intelligently, the hot end cooling fan here turns itself off when it's below about 50 or maybe 70 degrees, um, which we've seen on some other printers as well. So first things first, I'm just gonna hit home. Um, this is the main screen that we're presented with, with like an emergency stop button up here at the top. Obviously you see the heated bed and hot end temperatures, um, standby temperatures if applicable. Um, current coordinates, um, the uh, leveling mesh P0 that we're using. Um, so at the bottom, um, we have things like move, and we can move to, uh, you know, we can move up 50 millimeters after we've homed, obviously, won't let us move until we've homed. It's all home all axes. And unlike most of the printers that we look at, where home is the front left corner, it's the back right corner. And then it will use Z-safe homing to home the Z in the center of the bed. Okay. And so now we can go to the move option and I can do things like move it up 50 millimeters at a time, X, Y, Z, etc. as you'd expect. 
Go back to control. Um, we can home the axes individually. Um, so I could just home X, for example. Quite quiet. Um, and then in the setup menu here, um, we can calibrate the BL touch. Um, you can end up flipping the display. Um, a light theme, for example. We can do dark theme. So this is for the screen. Um, let's go back up and go back to light theme. I find this a little bit easier to read. Um, and then in the setup, we can do things like change the brightness. So that is the brightness for the screen. Um, so brightness down and brightness up. Um, and then in the console here, any messages that need to be presented to you, like if the printer has any kind of warning or error conditions, you'll see that here. Really, it's just been connected for a minute or so. Under print, we'll see um, options like the print speed, the fan speed, um, you know, what's currently happening in the print. Um, and stop is always an option there to stop that if necessary. It kind of reboots the whole machine. It's like an emergency stop. And so in here, we see the SD card. If I hit on the SD card, you would see the files that you've uploaded to the, to the printer. Um, currently, there's nothing on this SD card, but we've already actually done our test prints. Under macro, there are some options here uh, like air filtration. So that's where we can turn on and off the HEPA filter at the top. Um, we've also got uh, some Wi-Fi options. So this is where you can turn Wi-Fi on. There's a resume print option. Um, you'll see preheat. You have the preheat uh, presets for different materials. And under filament, you've got um, load and unload for different filaments. So that's a two second overview really of, uh, of the menu system. So we have three test prints. Um, a guy at the shop, not me, uh, sliced it using just his regular profile from another Bowden system. Um, I think he was using about six and a half millimeters of retract on this. Um, and the first thing he hit print on was a XYZ cube. Um, he did no calibration or anything. He just hit go. Um, this is what we came out with at 100 millimeters a second, um, which is pretty quick. Um, a couple things I would have done differently is uh, aligned the Z seam um, to maybe the sharpest corner instead of random, um, which ends up in uh, little streaking kind of artifacts um, and tiny little blobs at the corners, which can be tuned out with a, a couple changes to some settings. Um, but the walls look nicely stacked. Uh, even the top layer is nice and smooth. Um, we have a tiny gap between some of the walls and the top layer, um, which leads me to believe that we might need to look at our um, line thickness and calibrate our, our flow and our line thickness uh, a little bit there. But E-Step's pretty close to bang on um, from at least the output of this. So then we went on to a two-part uh, Vader bust. Uh, again, this was printed at 100 millimeters a second. Um, and it turned out Good, um, there's a little bit of streaking here. Um, again, uh, could be due to line width uh, needing to be calibrated a little bit or a flow, um, but generally, especially considering it was 100 millimeters a second at 0.2 millimeter layer height, it's pretty good. Um, and then finally, we did a TPU print. So this is a um, GoPro cover in this hot pink kind of TPU. Um, it was printed like that on the bed. And this was done at 70 millimeters a second. Um, if you're familiar with TPU, especially on a Bowden setup, uh, you need to go a lot slower than your normal print speed. Um, 70, as far as I'm concerned, is fantastic for TPU, especially TPU with uh, a decent amount of flex. There are definitely some flexier TPUs like Ninja Flex, um, but this is not stiff um, in the grand scheme of things. It is rather thick. Um, so that adds to some of the stiffness, um, but uh, it's, it's pretty flexible. Um, so, and that turned out fantastic. I mean, especially here, the, the layers are ridiculously smooth on that. So beautiful stacking there. Um, and I, I really have nothing to complain about as far as how this is performed out of the box. Um, I can't wait to spend a little bit more time with it, uh, fine tune some settings, um, especially uh, the coast and wipe. Uh, which will help um, reduce any of the blobs at um, the outer layer starts, um, which we see on this a little bit. And also the flow uh, and line width uh, calibrations 
as well as e-steps just to make sure that those are bang on as well. Um, but considering out of the box, it comes pre-assembled, it came set up with that level of calibration and we're able to get this with doing nothing but reusing an existing profile from a somewhat similar machine, I have no complaints whatsoever. Hopefully you found all of this useful. Remember to like and subscribe and ring the bell to get notified when we upload more videos like this. Thanks for watching.